Hi everybody, this video is about the casters I made for my table saw. This is a Ryobi model RTS-10. I needed to move it around the garage to work with it, but also to put it away so I can park my car in the garage. And I got a little tired of lugging it around to move it, so I came up with some casters and a mechanism. So let's, let's have a look at how that works. One hand on the handle, wheels are down. Position the saw how I like. Disengage. Saw's on the floor. No problem. Let's have a closer look at how it works. Alright, these are all parts that I had laying around the house. This is essentially 1x3 scrap. Um, there's a little piece of oak here to act like a, a bearing. A piece of pine. Handle from some old garden clippers. Rotate it 180. We're up on the wheels. Set it back down. We're on the feet. I bought the casters at the hardware store. Uh, just swivel type, no locks. The door hinges I've had around for years and years. I don't even know how I got them. The angle bracket here keeps the, the board from over rotating. I was having the casters flip out occasionally to the wrong side, so that keeps them under control. So up and down just like that. was easy movement of the saw. Uh, I didn't have a real definite plan on how to do that, but I knew wheels would be involved. So I bought some casters, just plain old swivel, two inch diameter, black plastic. They look to me to be a good compromise between price and functionality. And I watched uh, some YouTube videos and Got some inspiration there and figured, well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but I'm going to need some kind of board with a hinge in it to pull the casters up off the floor or to drive them down onto the floor. And I decided that, in my case, I wanted an inch and a half of lift, so I put a, a scrap of 2 by 4 under all the corners. Uh, for those of you who work in metric, uh, this is two inches by four inches when first cut from the tree and then dried down to inch and a half by three and a half final dimension. So anyway, that was an easy way for me to get inch and a half up off the floor. With the inch and a half off the floor decided by my scrap lumber, I mounted the boards with the caster board parallel to the ground. I wanted a good tuck into the legs here. So I cut the boards at an angle. I don't know what that angle is. I don't have to know what it is. I just use my bevel gauge to copy the angle from right here. Bevel gauge 2001, courtesy of GS. You know who you are. So trace that off, or trace it. Cut it off, give it a chamfer, chamfer with the hand plane on each end. Mount these boards.
uh, may come to regret placing the boards across the front and back in case that's where I want to put my feet as I'm using the saw. But I don't, I don't really think it'll be a problem. I've got room to stand here. I'm not always going to be working right up over the saw. Um, if it does become a problem, I could just shorten the length on both ends and rotate the entire mechanism 90 degrees. So the boards are mounted with the casters on the hinges. I know I want this to be my final position to be able to move the saw around without the inch and a half prop blocks. So I've stared at it for a week or two, trying to think of a mechanism to drive the wheels down. Thought about something with a, a connecting rod out here on the ends that might go to some, some block here in the middle with a handle and drive the drive the boards down. But I also kind of wanted a, a full retract. So that mechanism would have to come from above with a double rod, which means more pivots, some kind of mechanism, so maybe up into the frame here. And I didn't want to keep adding and adding and adding components to make some way for these to go up and down. So I left it like this for a week or two. I tried to think of a mechanism. I wanted something kind of cool, but one-handed, not too complicated. So I went back to YouTube to see if I could get some inspiration there. And let's talk about those videos. I'll paste a list of these videos down in the description so you can watch them yourself if you like. The first one was by YouTube user I also, I A L S O, title Retractable Table Saw Casters. So thanks for posting that one. Uh, what I liked about that one was a full height lift and it was a really cheap solution. What I didn't really like was that it was multiple steps to use and you have to lift the saw and use a foot to swing the casters and then lift the saw again and use a foot to swing the casters um, and then when the casters are retracted the saw is resting on two boards I thought that would be more subject to any debris around the floor making for a rocking point for the saw but it was a quick cheap solution so good job to Mr. I also for coming up with that Next video to talk about was by YouTube user AJP Cat, A J P C A T, titled Table Saw Wheels and Other Things. What I liked about that what it was it was foot activated with an automatic lock. But what I didn't really like was the low lift. It only seemed to pop the saw up about a quarter of an inch and it was kind of wobbly. I think it was because he had his caster set too close to the middle of the saw. Next up is Carl Holmgren, Retractable Casters for Power Tools. He's got an impressive collection of tools and he packs them in tight. What I like about Carl's video is the foot activation and the automatic locking, but uh, I don't really like the low lift. Again, he really only pops his tools up about a quarter of an inch. And the saw, it, with his mechanism, rests on the boards, not on the original feet. I also watched Alcala Guitars, Guitar Shop Innovations, Mobile Bandsaw Base. Uh, it's a good video. Uh, I like the mechanism. It's really elegant. I like the foot operation with an automatic lock. But again, that was out for me because it was only about a quarter inch lift. I'm trying to get an inch and a half. Next video to mention is Par 5 Indos 562 shop built mobile base. I liked the locking rods that appealed to my desire for some kind of mechanism but I didn't really like that again it was low lift only about a quarter inch. The There's wood outside the perimeter of the tool to make the mechanism work and to engage it you have to reach to the middle twice. I was hoping for just to reach in, do something, done. I also watched Osprey Golf's video, Retractable Work Table Wheels. I liked the cam motion. I thought there might be something there to work with.
But again, in this case, I didn't really like the low lift. It was fine for him. Did what he needed to do. And I'm pretty sure he had to do one mechanism per end. This was for a shop table definitely heavier than my heavier and larger than my table saw. So I don't blame him for having two handles to get the motion he needs. Okay, based on the video by Par5 Endos 562, I dug up some random rods, inanimate carbon rods that is, and I was able to sort of simulate the same mechanism by jamming these rods between the in the gap between the boards right there. So I could force the saw up onto its wheels, lower it back down onto the feet. But I couldn't really work out a simple mechanism that would push downward here about four inches and retract back up. I thought about running some additional bar across the middle of the board. And it seemed, seemed promising. I was up on the wheels. I could move it around. but I couldn't quite work out the engagement. So, back to YouTube I went, and let's talk about that one. All right, I got my aha moment after watching this video by FlyRoyE3, Bandsaw Mobile Base. I really like the high lift and the cam mechanism, one-handed operation, uh, I didn't really like the handle design. He's got a pipe on there that he takes on and off, but hey, works for him, gets the job done. But uh, good job, Fly Roy E3. The cam design, it was for me. All right, so with the cam design chosen, I came over here to the Panto router and cut myself off a piece of 2x2. Two two. You know what I'm talking about? So with my 2x2 two two cut to length to fit between the rails, I mounted a couple of wood screws on the end as pivots, just to get an idea of what's going on here, and I decided against drilling right into the board because I thought it might split out. I had sort of a conflicting design requirement here. I needed to make room for the board with the wheels to retract upward. And I was even thinking about attaching a spring or a bungee or something to pull them all the way up, just because I thought it'd be cool. But I gave up on that, and I decided to grab some little scrap blocks of oak to make some bearings here. So that's that's how the 2x2 two two goes on there. Let's have a closer look at the oak blocks. There's a couple things going on here to mount a little oak bearing block. As you recall from the, the bevel gauge, the legs are at an angle. So I couldn't just stick a little square block on here because I would push up against my piece of 2x2. Two two. So with the, with the bevel gauge, I just chamfered off a corner there. So then I don't have to worry about this corner of the 2x2 the two two crashing the oak block. And then I took the block to the bench vise and hit it with the file at an angle. So the slot through the block would be parallel to the ground, matching the wood screw axle right there. And I wasn't worried about this board being off angle because I knew while doing the work of lifting the saw, all my loading would be pulling upward against the oak to drive the wheels down. So I just wanted the oak to be parallel to the screw. 
and on the front side here, my board's about two and eh, about two and five eighths inches. But around the back, my other random scrap of wood, it's about two and three quarters hence the hence the notch hence the notch right here to put this oak block at the same distance from the floor as the oak block over there okay things are starting to come together with the 2 by 2 mounted in place which here in the states usually measures inch and a half by inch and a half and the boards in the down position. I've got a pretty good lift in case I still wanted to put a spring here or something, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I've got my oak block here acting as a bearing. I think this is going to have the strength I need. So, I've got Got two and a half inches to fill between the board and the two by two, and then another three quarters of an inch to where the screw acts as the pivot point. And that three quarters of an inch uh, I sort of forgot about. And that'll come up in the cam design when I've sort of messed up on my first pass. So two and a half inches. I'm trying to go from zero to two and a half. And I decided that 180 degrees of motion would be good for me. So let's look at cam design. Slightly off topic, but I want to bring it up while I'm thinking about it. This particular Ryobi table saw, the RTS-10, um, my wife got it for me as a Christmas gift. I'm sure it was a, a good price. It's my first table saw. and I'm, I'm overall pleased with it. I wanted to ask any watchers of this about this uh, slot for the miter gauge. The, the tabletop is stamped and folded sheet metal. The miter gauge itself is stamped sheet metal. And the fit, I'd say, is quite poor. So I can't really count on this for doing any precision work. I can sort of try to load it to one side as I feed through, but, you know, come on, you guys have seen all the videos with the iron top saws and the, the miter gauge slides, just perfect. And there's one where the guy tunes it a little bit by pinging it on the side to get just that perfect fit. I very much do not have the perfect fit. So, if any of you have any tips for me on what to do about this, please pass them on. Uh, perhaps I should just throw this in the trash and make something out of wood that actually fits this slot. So I established I need two and a half inches of lift from the 2x2 two two to the board for the casters to be where I want them. So I'll start with what I did wrong so maybe hopefully you won't make the same mistakes I did and I thought I'd aim for two and three quarter inches and then flatten it back out to two and a half to be some kind of locking mechanism. So I set my compass to two and a half inches, drew an arc that then I'd flatten here at the bottom to lock on the board, opened the compass to two and three quarter inches, drew another arc, and then sort of eased from one to the other. And I did go ahead and cut out this shape and try to test fit but what I didn't realize was that with the cam at the zero position, as soon as I start trying to rotate it, I've already got two inches of push instantaneously. So I messed up on considering that my pivot was in the middle of the 2x2 two two and that I needed to start at zero at this corner. So the solution to that is right here. 
and to divide this up to help me make a shape I went ahead and switched over to millimeters um, at, at 45 degrees that's sort of my zero point and a 45 degree from the center on a 2x2 two two is about 27 millimeters for easy math I rounded that up to 30 and from the center of the 2x2 two two to my target um, that ended up being a total of three and a half inches which is about 90 millimeters so it ended up being actually pretty simple here 45 it's basically starting at 30 millimeters 180 I want to be at 90 millimeters so I just divided every 22 and a half degrees I for my particular dimensions needed 10 millimeter growth in radius so I just kind of plotted out these marks and drew a curve so 45 from the center I'm about at about 30 millimeters at 67 and a half degrees I'm at 40 at 90 degrees I'm at 50 millimeters 112 and a half I'm at 60 135 I'm at 70 157 and a half I'm at 80 and then at 180 my overshoot mark is at 90 millimeters but then I just flattened it off to two and a half inches here because that's what I needed and that's and that's how it locks so to illustrate starting at zero rotate the board's getting pushed farther and farther away from the two by two and then I lock in on the, the flat edge so that works for my particular build um, just sort of by happenstance I needed two and a half inches and it just worked out better to go with millimeters and divide by how many trace points I wanted to make and yeah those are the marks I just sort of eased the curve from one to the next and that's how I made the cam Okay, so the cam's made. We're back out in the garage. The the cam that actually works, right here. And I used a piece of random wood to make the cam. It measures like inch and an eighth by eight inch. It had four holes in it. My guess is it was a stair tread. I don't even know where I got it. So I had already cut out my two cams that didn't work out of this board. So I traced on those with the the new cam that goes zero to two and a half. And over the bandsaw. Cut my board here to shape. Glued and screwed it onto the two by two. One at each end. So we'll start at zero, turn the handle, and then we'll be two and a half inches higher in the air. The handle was salvaged from an old pair of hitch clippers. One handle broke, but I hung on to this one just because it was nice. Thought I might make something out of it someday. And so now got the mechanism ready. Um, I wanted something, some kind of lube here, wood compatible lube. Uh, so I went looking for a bar of my wife's canning wax, didn't find any, but for some odd reason out here in the garage, I had a little tea light candle. Mmm, peach. So I dripped some wax onto the cam surface. And yeah, you know, I don't know, seems to be working, helps slide wood on wood. It's not like I'm my duty cycle's very high anyway. 
until the heart of the system is built, assembled, glued. Let's go to assembly and see if it works. Okay, saws off the blocks, moment of truth. Oh, a uh, side note, the I did just barely chamfer these inner edges so they wouldn't tear up my cams. And as it operates, it goes over to the flat side. I just didn't want these sharp edges to tear up the cam. And we're lifted. We're moving. Now, watch this. If I hit a bump just right, that board folds over. So, that's a bummer. A quick solution to that. It's right here with this L bracket to make sort of a maximum travel limit. No, you may not pass. Don't go near there, stay away from the river. Okay, retainer bracket installed. The caster board can't flip over and cause me any troubles. Onto the ground, ready for action. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go have some dinner. Mmm, beer. Goodbye.